All right, so this tutorial is going to go through just a, a really quick demo of using Rhinomo as a way of getting uh, some geometry between uh, Rhino and Revit. Um, so in some of the past um, tutorials we've looked at, we've used Hummingbird um, and developed adaptive components and things like that. And so this is just kind of going to go through uh, an alternative workflow um, that might make more sense based on what you're trying to do. So in this Rhino model here, I have just kind of a, a dump of my Revit model of the lever house uh, building that we've been working on through these tutorials. And I just made this really kind of dumb surface, um, just like a, a double curve surface that will bring in to Revit and begin to split it up uh, by, by level. Now, I could definitely do this within the Rhino environment, um, but because I don't quite, it, you know, it's the, the information in terms of the levels isn't really embedded in Rhino as it is in, in Revit, um, this would be an example of a task that might make more sense for using Rhino. All right, so basically I have the surface and I put it on its own layer called facade. You'll see why that's important in a second. So if I go back into Revit, I have Dynamo open, here's my Revit model. Um, and so I'm going to start to bring that facade in. I'm going to have the Rhinomo package installed. And I'm going to, first step is going to basically to be open the get the Rhino file. And so I'm just going to do the file path. And then depending on what version of Dynamo you're in, this will look a little bit different. Um, but basically, you're going to get the file. And it's going to basically break out your model uh, into a, grab a bunch of properties from there. Um, so I'm going to get the Rhino objects by layer, and then I'm going to need um, the get document objects, or sorry, um, this is all I need. So I feed the Rhino model in, um, and then I'm going to give it just a string with the layer, so it was called facade. And so you'll see now I have that object that was in there. And I'm going to, you can basically, in order to translate that Rhino geometry into like a design script geometry, which is what this DS stands for, um, you'll see there's a bunch of options here. Um, in this case, we're going to do a NURB surface, because that's what we have in Rhino. So we're going to spit that in here. And that'll give us a piece of, uh, geometry uh, as a as a design script. So if we were to throw a watch node, so here you'll see there's our nerve surface, um, and what we can do is uh, because it's in a list, we're probably what we're gonna want to end up doing just because this is the only service we're working with. We're just going to flatten this, um, or sorry, not flatten it. Um, we're going to grab the item itself rather than the list. I'm going to feed it that list of surfaces, and I'm just going to grab the uh, first item, the only item. And then this gives us the surface itself. And we'll put that aside for a little bit, and we're going to grab the, the levels. So in this exercise, essentially what I'm going to be doing is going to 
sort of create a, a different wall. I'm going to kind of split this larger surface up into surfaces based on the levels. And I'll just build up a wall um, at each level. So first step I'm going to need to do is grab the levels. So I'm going to do um, get by category. All elements of category. And my category is going to be levels. So I'm going to grab the categories and I'm going to scroll down to levels. And that's going to give me all my levels. Now, I know that in this case, the surface actually doesn't really start until level four, I believe. Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah, level four. So I'm actually going to remove the first three levels from this list. Um, so I can do that by uh, doing the drop. I think there's something like drop items. I think that's what we want. Um, so we'll feed in our list of levels, the amount we want to drop. So, so I'll get a number slot in case I'm wrong in my guess. Um, so I'll put in three here. And that should give us a list. So now we have a list of floors four, four through the roof level. Um, all right, so now I have that, I can Basically, what I want to do is split this surface up. So I'm going to do like an intersection between this surface and a plane at each of those levels. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to have to create a plane um, at each level. So in order to get the Z sort of height of that plane, I'm going to grab the elevation of the levels. Um, so there's this elevation component level feet in a level and it's just going to give you the height in feet above uh, zero. So this gives us our z's and then we're going to basically construct a point I, as you see I often confuse my uh, grasshopper and dynamo terminologies. <laughs> um, these are going to be our z's and then we can just leave x and y is 0, and we're going to do plane by origin normal. And then our points are going to be our origins. And by default, I believe the normal should just be z. If we zoom out here, we should see all those planes. And yeah, so by default, the normal is uh, up in the z-axis. So I don't need to plug in anything else for the normal. Okay, so now that we have that, we can use these planes to intersect our geometry. So we'll use the geometry intersect. Component and our geometry is going to be this surface and then the other is going to be these planes and you'll see it breaks it intersects that geometry. And essentially what it should give us is a series of curves. So we have all those NURBS curves where it splits that surface. And we might want to flatten this list just to make it easier to work with as we go forward. Because as you see, it's a nested list. So it's a list of lists. So if we flatten that, that should just give us one flat list of curves. So that's good. Um, so now essentially, um, what we want to end up doing is building a wall off of all these. So the tool I'm going to end up using for that, I'm just going to bring it in now so we can see what it wants us to feed in. Uh, wall by curve and levels. So the first thing it wants is the curves. Uh, the second is the start level, the end level, and the wall type. So I'm going to grab the wall type real quick. Um, I'm just going to pick 
something random, whatever, brick on CMU. Uh, I'll fit that into the wall type. These are going to be our curves. However, because as you'll see here in the background, we're getting a curve at the top as well, which we don't want, um, since that's kind of the roof level. So we're going to drop that item. Um, and the way, the quick way to do that is if you just do negative one in your amount, it'll start at the end and basically drop one item from the end. Um, so we should basically have a list of uh, 18 curves since before we had 19. Now we have 18 curves. If I select on this, you should see it basically selects all of them except for this top one. So those are going to be my curves. I can plug that in. Um, and then I'm going to need the start and end levels. So right now, back here with our levels, we have um, we have the 19 levels. And essentially, we want to basically take 4 through whatever it is, 21, and then 5 through roof in order to kind of give the start and end. So we're going to, again, actually, I'm just going to go copy paste this uh, drop items. And we're going to go to our levels. So these are our original list of 19 levels. And then what this is going to give me, essentially, I'm just going to copy this once more. And this time I'm going to get rid of the first one. So now I'm going to get levels 4 through 21, which are going to be my start levels. And then I'm going to get levels 5 through roof, which are going to be my end levels. And before I connect everything, I'm just going to change this up manual so it doesn't, just in case it doesn't try and run it too soon. Um, so my start levels are here. And then these will be my end levels. And we should be good to go now. Um, so I'm going to run this. Uh, what did we do wrong? Um, oh, so we have to, in this case, the NURBS curves are, uh, they need to be simplified, um, which is fine. In this case, the, they're actually just straight lines coming across the surface. So what we could do is we can basically grab the endpoints and create a line, or we can just use the simplify curve. So I'm going to feed my curves in here, and I'm just going to give it a tolerance of 2. It has to do with the knots in the curve, I believe. Or the degree of interior knots must be uh, 2 or less, essentially. Um, all right, so that should work now. Feed. I'm just going to... Well, it's manual, so we'll find out. Um, all right, cool. So that works. So now if we come into Revit, you'll see that we created a wall at each of those levels. Um, and now, you know, you can do whatever you would want. In this case, like, if you were to really kind of flesh out this exercise, you would also want to change the floor boundaries and do a bunch of more things in order to kind of like close everything off. Um, but this is just kind of a quick demo of the overall workflow. Um, so this is kind of something that, as opposed to, you could definitely do this um, using like Hummingbird or, or some other uh, workflows, but this is, this is just kind of a demo for those who are more comfortable with Dynamo, um, who would want to use kind of like a Rhinomo workflow. Um, and it kind of takes advantage of the fact that within Dynamo, you can grab your level elevation heights and things like that. So um, I'll stop it at that. And uh, that's, that'll be it. Thanks.